I told you is Sheila May Rivera Martinez Martinez Cortez Romero Reventó Murphy. He never gets it. I'm Murphy by marriage. I married uh, an Irish guy at one point. Uh, very interesting wedding because he was Irish Catholic. I'm Puerto Rican Catholic. Means half the family was drunk before the wedding, and the other half stole their cars. <laughs> And everybody ended up pregnant. It was fine. <laughs> I have a couple of children. My children half Irish, half Puerto Rican. That means they dance salsa like this. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm Latino means I'm broke. I know, yes, I know, a lot of us are. It is, but it's a good thing. There's a silver lining, you know, when you're broke because uh, the economy went down. I'm like, so? <laughs> That's right. Somebody came up to me and said, hey, the market went down. I'm like, what, the supermarket? What happened? <laughs> We don't relate the same way. <laughs> I missed on the housing bailout too, you know, last year. We had the holidays coming, which is a good thing. Last year, I made a resolution. I was going to buy a house. And, uh, you know, I said, that's it. I'm going to go. I'm going to buy a house this year. That's it. I went to my accountant, you know, my cousin. <laughs> and I said, dude, I want to buy a house. He said, you know, you're so broke and your credit is so bad. You should file bankruptcy and then you can buy a house. I said, this is a great nation. I went to file bankruptcy, it cost $800. So I'm saving up to go bankrupt right now. That's what it is. It's a good thing that Latinos are taking over in this culture, you know, white people, you should not be scared. You should hang with us because, you know, there's a lot of things we're gonna change. We're gonna change television to things, you know, we don't need Martha Stewart living. We need Rosa Perez surviving. <laughs> With real advice, like today we're gonna learn how to make chicken soup from the leftover bones from the pozole last week. <laughs> sure, it's a good thing that, uh, you know, Latinos are becoming a good number in Hollywood because now, you know, uh, they're paying attention to us and I've signed up to do three movies. I want you guys to support me, please. Yes. <laughs> They are based on the uh, Latino, my experience, and uh, they're remakes of big blockbuster movies. The first one I'm working on is called uh, Aaron Broken Bitch. <laughs> yeah, look for me in that one. Then I'm working on the six cents I have left in the bank. <laughs> I'm in the lobby, I see rich people. <laughs> then in the fall, I'm gonna work on the uh, hunt for the rent in October. That one's always fun. <laughs> Yes, because Latinos, we relate to things differently, like I said, you know. Yeah, we are, we are different, it's a good thing. Um, I, I did go to school, a lot of you did go to school too. I, uh, like, you know, most Puerto Ricans, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, then we moved to uh, Texas. Because, yeah, that's where we went. I went to college, I studied aerospace engineering, obviously. And uh, I did, I went to Texas A&M, aerospace engineering and psychology, because I figured I'd come in handy someday when we find life in another planet that needs therapy. Be like, E.T., why won't you call your mother? Come on, light up the finger, cabron, let's go. I used to work at the Johnson Space Center in Houston where I was a rocket scientist, but I had to quit because I make mistakes and apparently that's not allowed. No, you sneeze on the Hubble mirror one time, oh, moco, you're out of there. I wanted to be an astronaut, I wanted to be the first Puerto Rican woman in space. I had it all figured out too, you would have known my mission, right? Because of the fuzzy dice hanging from the rear of the mirror. <laughs> Dingo balls are on the windshield. We would return, pa 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 beep beep. You know, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> now I'm doing comedy, which is great. The only person that's upset is my mother, my Puerto Rican mother, because she wants her tuition money back. <laughs> but she didn't pay for my tuition. See, but it doesn't matter her, because she's Latino, and Latino moms are cuckoo. Yeah, she's crazy. I'm like, wait a second, mom, you didn't pay. She's like, no, 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 but wait a second, wait a second. Who had you? <laughs> That's her logic. You tell me right now, who had you? <coughs> you don't mess with Latino moms because they'll beat you. That's another thing that white people, you can learn from us. And uh, yeah, beat your children is a good thing. It feels good. Keeps you young. <laughs> I'm 103 years old. I love it in this nation, you know, they don't beat children, they just, you know, use time out. Yeah, my mom used time out to rest her arm before she kept on kicking my ass. No, wait a second, time out, I'm tired, wait a second. 
My mom was a growl and sniff kind of mom. You know how moms have the silent signs to let you know in public that you're gonna get the crap beat out of you when you get home? But they don't want anybody else to know. You have things like the look. <laughs> My mom would go. <laughs> People go, what the hell was that? And then before she beat us, she would get my dad's belt. She would make us smell it. Anyone? She was insane. She's like, well, here, well, I'll smell it. Well, I'll. What do you smell? <sighs> I smell my ass from yesterday, Ma. Because <laughs> if you have kids, you know that all you want for kids is to be quiet in public, right? <laughs> you know, you just want them to be quiet. It doesn't matter what happens. You know, you tell them that they're okay. Like if they get hurt in public, you tell them they're okay, so they shut up, right? They can walk into the corner of a table. Psh. No, no, you're okay. Shut up. Shh. It's just a little blood behold. Shh. Don't be a pussy. Shut up. Now shut up and help mama find your eyeball, honey. Oh, no, look, it's right here. Wait. Mm -hmm. Shh. <laughs> you guys are so much fun. So anyway, yes, it's good to be here. I, like I said, I have children, which I, you know, I'm, they're gone now, which is a good thing. I like that because, uh, you know, yeah, they're gone. And uh, I have a neighbor. My neighbor told me the other day that, uh, you know, you should be, you must be sad now that you're an empty nester. I'm like, wh what is that? See, Latinos, we don't know what that is. You know that I can, you know, because Latino children never leave the house. <laughs> Yeah, I had to look it up on the internet, you know? Yeah, I really had to go on there. Apparently, the white women get sad when the children leave, you know? And you know that they're sick because they do things like they'll go into the kids' room, they'll sniff their clothing. Like, are you serious? I spent 18 years shutting my son's door so the smell of dirty butt and socks and rotten milk wouldn't come into the house. When he left, I had to go in there with sage, holy water, and a priest. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's my time. I'm Shayla Rivera. Thank you very much. Ladies, hi. You guys like that? It's good right there, right? You know what they say, once you go chubby, you want to make him your hubby, right? Once you slip a fatty, you're going to call him daddy. It's in the Bible, I'm not lying, I swear. It's good though, man. Latinas in the house, lots of Latinas. It's good. I wish, like, everybody has their own show now, I wish Latinas had their own show. Like Hispanic Housewives. That'd be dope. I'm just gonna, that'd be dope. Like, can you just imagine how much drama that show would be filled with? Just pure drama for the whole hour, like, no, Maria, I think she's out bad because she got her welfare check early. Forget her. Her eyebrows look all stupid. <laughs> and Sharpie face, what? She thinks she's all bad because Hyman graduated? What? That's your dad, he should have graduated 30 years ago, okay? Get over it, Everest. Oh, God. Okay, I'll let you finish. It's good though, man. Pickup lines are crazy. I have my own pickup lines. I can't use it. I just think it'd be fun. Like, imagine babies had pickup lines. As a, I don't know how they would walk, but they'd probably, like, like, I don't know. Like a baby, I don't know how a baby walks, but it'd probably be like, you know, there'd always be a baby, comes up to a little baby girl, and he's like, hey, yo, girl, why don't you take off that diaper and let me get hyper, hey? <laughs> Unzip the onesie, let's have some funsie. What's up, hey? That black little baby who always has the material objects, right? And he pulls up to the girl. He's like this. He's like, yo, what up, girl? No, what you mean no? Girl, this is a big wheel. And he just jams. <laughs> it's, it's got spinners on it, dice, it's leased. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> My daddy said it was cool. This past Halloween, my girlfriend tried to dress up like Spider-Man. I know, right? 
So I told her very nicely, like a gentleman, I walked up to her real soft, grabbed her arm. I was like, look, stupid. Uh, that's pretty dumb if you're gonna try to get me to this, this costume, because it's not gonna happen. Like, you got a better chance of trying to make a mermaid do the splits, because it is not gonna, because honestly, guys, I don't look like Spider-Man, right? No, I look like I ate Spider-Man, let's be honest. I don't even need the costume. I take off my shirt, my stretch marks to the webs, let's go. That's how I catch women, because I'm too lazy to run after them. <laughs> Come here. I caught a girl my size one time. I was like, oh. She pulled me. I was like, stop eating the web. I'm trying to catch you. Come here. It's probably one of those girls in here. Feels good, though, man. It's good. Like, women, you guys are ridiculous. I really don't get you. I hate it when an ugly girl tries to tell me that I'm fat. Like, I don't already know. Like, I own a mirror, okay? It's like, I can lose the weight. You're gonna be ugly forever. <laughs> like, I can go run, lift weights, wear black. I'm okay. Like, you, there's nowhere you can go. Like, there's no fugly fitness out there, okay? There's no face watchers. You're done. That's it. That's a dope laugh you got there. <laughs> Sorry, I just... That was weird. <laughs> guys over here in the front, we're cool. Give it up for your weight staff, guys. Give it up for your weight staff. Doing real good for you guys. <laughs> it's crazy though, man. Like I'm young, but I feel old. Do you guys ever get that feeling? I'm young, but I, uh, like, I can only imagine how you guys feel, but I feel that way sometimes. It's like, oh, whatever, I'm Spider-Man, ha, ha, ha. It's, it's weird, man. Like I want to go back to the days where you had no worries, where you were just playing street games with your friends, like hide and seek. You guys remember hide and seek? I used to try to hide behind things that I couldn't fit behind. Like I'm standing behind a mailbox or a tetherball pole just chilling. <gasps> My shadow had stretch marks, whatever. Parents, you got parents in here? Parents are hypocrites. I swear, I hate you guys. You guys are hypocrites, man. I'm so glad I'm out of high school. I really am. Because in high school, I used to leave for parties at 10 o'clock, and my dad would be getting home at 10 o'clock, and he'd be all drunk after work, because Latinos uh, drink after work to pay themselves back for the hard work they did during the day. Half of these people just got off of work. And it's ridiculous, because I would be leaving to go to a party at 10 o'clock, my dad would be catching me in the driveway. He catches me, he goes, hey, come here, stupid. Hey, I know you're going to a party, okay? I don't want you to be drinking and drive. If you get too drunk, you call me, I go pick you up. <laughs> really, dad? Because you're more drunk than I'm about to be. <laughs> then he had the audacity to go pip, pip to his truck. No, he doesn't even have an alarm. He did it with his mouth. He was like, pip, pip. <laughs> pip, 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 pip. He's in the shower, pip, pip, pip. It's ridiculous. Women, you guys do, I, I just don't understand you. Like you do some stuff that's just like way out of this world. Like a girl can get with you and leave you for the exact same reason, you know that? For the exact same reason, like me, I'm a comedian. Girls get with me because I'm a comedian, and then they leave me because everything's a joke to me. <laughs> Make up your mind. I'm glad I'm out of high school, I really am. Because girls don't respect themselves anymore. Girls really don't respect. Like, you all women, you guys all respect yourselves. Round of applause for yourself, much, much respect to you. Or if you hate yourself, don't even clap, whatever. <laughs> Cause man, they're so provocative today. Everybody, all the girls, they just want to have sex. All just throwing out sex, throwing out their virginities like it's nothing. And it's crazy, cause I, that, that would happen at school all the time. All the time, like, oh yeah, hey, what's up? You want to have sex? <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. Yeah, man, my teachers were crazy. I mean, <laughs> I didn't get it. Those were just the guy teachers. Imagine the girls. I, I mean, Catholic school, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Going to hell. We got any black people in the house tonight? Uh, 
All right, hey. Now I can't do my black jokes. No, I'm just kidding. No, not even that. It's whenever, no, like really, whenever you say what's up to a black guy, doesn't he make you feel like the most important person in the world? Right? They make you feel so special. They really do. Like if you hadn't seen Jamal in like 15 years or a couple days, you were like, yo, Jamal, what's up, man? It's me, it's me, Dylan, from, from back in the day. Like you tell him, hey, what's up, man? You remember me? It's Dylan. Jamal's always gonna go like this. Who is that, man? Dylan. Hey, you know this fool right here? Dylan? Dylan, oh! Hold up, homie. Do I know you? I just wanted to dance. I wish I had a designated black person to follow me around to say the stuff I really wanted to say. Because we don't have filters. Black people don't have filters. They're straight up, 100%. It's crazy. I wish I could have a black just to follow me to say the stuff I want to say and I don't have the balls to say. Like if I'm breaking up with a girl, I'm like, yo, um, yeah, comedy's just getting real hard for me right now. I don't. I don't think I can do it. Uh, I just, she's not gonna work. And the black lady comes out of nowhere and she's like, girl, you ugly. <laughs> I'm Dylan Garcia, thank you. I know, people always go, where are you from? Dominican, baby, where am I gonna be from? You know, can you tell? We Dominicanos, we don't talk like this, like other people talk very serious. No, we're like, oh, Dominicano, baby, no me ves, que estoy así, que lo que te pasa. <laughs> and Dominicanos, man, we're so romantic dreamers, you know, we love kissing, you know, and stuff like that. Like, uh, I learned how to kiss, like, uh, when I was in, I don't know, fourth grade. <laughs> Yeah, we were playing spin in the bottle, you know? And that's when I found out I was a good kisser because every kid wanted to kiss me. <laughs> and let me tell you something, there's nothing better than a good kiss. Because to me, a kiss is the key to, <clears throat> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, but a bad kiss, you can always tell a bad kiss. Oh my God. Let me tell you, there was this guy, his name was Fernand. He wasn't a bad kisser, but he wasn't a great kisser. He was just like a butterfly that kind of comes and go, you know? <laughs> but then there was Poto. Poto was a horrible kisser. Oh my God, one of those kisses that just comes with your mouth open, you know? His mouth was like, a, like an alien that just sucked into your face. Like, <laughs> until you're like asphyxiating and you're like, get off, get off, get off, get off me, I'm asphyxiating, you know? So anyway, and then you, he finished and your f whole face is like sticky and wet from the saliva. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, please, you know. But you keep playing, you know, because then, then there was Chachi and he was the best kisser. I still remember. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a flashback. <laughs> And like if you are a smoker and then you kiss somebody that doesn't smoke, there's not a kiss. For the non-smoker, it's like sucking into a skunk's ass. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you guys, you better kiss a lot because I'm telling you, kisses, there's just like the key to sex, it is. With a kiss, you open that sex box. <laughs> yes, and besides kisses, I like love to me. This is why I'm so upset with my pinche gringo husband. <laughs> he doesn't kiss me enough. He doesn't, you know? And it, to me, and I know he loves me because baby, when I look at myself on the mirror, I'm looking at it going, what is there not to love? <laughs> I love me. I would do me. <laughs> But I don't understand why do I have to marry a gringo? I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and people say Latinos are the best lovers. I'm like, I know, that's because we teach the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh my God, yeah. But my gringo husband, I don't know, he's from North Carolina or South Carolina, I don't know. <laughs> 
I can never remember which one is it, because I don't understand why white people have to have two of those. <laughs> Telling you, freaking pinche gringo. <laughs> oh my God, you know. But I, you know, Latinos are the best lovers, but you Latinos are cheaters. Oh, they are, they are, you know. They cannot even masturbate on their own. <laughs> they have to steal somebody else's Playboy to do it with, I swear to you. <laughs> you know. But I will never, I will never wear a marry a Dominican guy because Dominican guys are so jealous too. Oh my God. Like if I come here checking my butt and stuff, you know, a Dominican guy will be in the back of the room with a chat going, going, don't move, I'm gonna kill the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, I swear to you, you know. I'm so glad you guys are understanding everything I say, you know, because I know my English is a little messed up right now. Yeah, I was out of the country for a while, you guys. I was in Florida. <laughs> Any Cubans here? <laughs> One. Oh. oh my God, we'll be talking about them. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, what else I want to tell you about Dominicans? Dominicans, oh my God, we grew up with so much guilt so much guilt, you know. Yeah, like, uh, you know, because we raised Catholic in my country as a law. I was so Catholic, you guys, I thought I was gonna become a nun till I realized the nun get nun and I wanted some. <laughs> oh my God, and what else? Oh, and, and we Dominicanos, we are the people that when you're flying and the plane lands, we applaud. <laughs> we're like, thank God we're alive. <laughs> We will give everything to the pilot, but they don't let us, yeah. And uh, we're always late, of course, you know, because our planes don't take off until the plane is full. It never has a time. It's like, is it full? Okay, let's go, you know. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you something. Oh my God, last time I flew the Dominican airline, there was this girl on the plane with this bad attitude, like she smelled something bad or something. Welcome to Dominican Airline. <laughs> Our plane. <laughs> have no emergency exits. <laughs> Today we're gonna be flying at an altitude of 25 feet. <laughs> so in case that we lose some air pressure on the cabin, stick your head out the window and get some fresh air. We have two choices of beverage, water and salt water. <laughs> and in case of an emergency of water landing for flotation device, please hold on to your wife, big ass. <laughs> Thank you for flying Dominican Airlines, which our motto is, hey baby, it's better than a freaking boat, let's go. And before I leave, you know, I just uh, wanted to tell everybody to go home, kiss a lot, <laughs> <laughs> have safe sex, and think of me. I love you guys, that's my time. <laughs>
I don't, I don't know. Probably not. It's probably not good news. <laughs> probably don't care. I don't know. I used to have a girlfriend, and uh, she kept saying, I'm break up with you, and I was like, good, I can stop cheating on you. <laughs> and she did. I was like, oh, okay. It sucked. Like, she broke up with me because uh, she caught me watching porn, and she was like, do you know how degrading that is to women? And I was like, it's not degrading. They're doctors and lawyers and <laughs> teachers. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know. It, was, it was weird having a girlfriend, because like when, you're, when you have a girlfriend, you have to do stupid stuff. Like she made me go to Forever 21. I hate that story, I hate going to Forever 21, because at Forever 21, there's nothing but delusional 31s. <laughs> Just like, nah, lady, you're not gonna fit in those jeans, don't do it, oh, don't, oh. I can see the scar, I can, oh. Oh, jeez. I wish there was a store of nothing but 21-year-olds. You know how awesome that'd be? Like, you'd walk in and just be like, she has no life experience. She has no life experience. This is awesome. Because when you're 21, you don't. You're just able to drink. It's legal, and that's all you do. You just drink, party, drink, party, drink, party. Oh, man, I'm pregnant. Oh, no. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I know how I want to die. Like, I thought about it, and I don't want to get old. Because when you get old, like, you worked your entire life and you become a joke. Like, everybody's laughing at you at a certain age. He's like, ah, oh, look at Grandpa. He's trying to watch TV, but he's at the microwave. <laughs> like, it's sad. Like, this is what I want to do. Like, when I get to an age when I think every day is Christmas, like, I'm walking out, is it Christmas? And my grandkids like, no, Grandpa. Oh, shoot. Mer. This is what they're going to do. They're going to get a cage, and then they're going to get a bear. And then get a webcam. I'm gonna fight that bear to death. Anything that's dumb, it's a bear. That bear's gonna kill you. You're an old man. No, no, it's gonna be an awesome old man versus bear cage match. Cause that bear's not gonna know it hit him. Cause my family's gonna pump me up with so much PCP. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be like in this corner, a bear. Roar! And in this corner, old man. Is it Christmas? Is it Christmas? And then as we get closer, that bear's gonna get angrier. Roar! But I don't care, I'm gonna be on PCP. I'm gonna be like, where is my Xbox, damn it, where is it? And that bear's gonna swing. Uh, Discovery Channel fact, people, uh, bears are strong as hell. It's gonna knock my arm right off. But I don't care, PCP power, I'm gonna pick it up and just be like, die bear, die! And that bear's gonna get knocked down, I'm gonna jump on its back and we're gonna ride off into the woods and cuddle. <laughs> That's how I wanna die, like a man in the arms of a bear. I'm really glad Thomas Edison invented electricity and not Thomas White, because I'd hate to have to pay the White Power Company every month. <laughs> Here you go, man. Another $35. I want to open up an ice cream shop and call it the gym, so fat people can update their status. They're going to the gym, just like everybody else. I'm going to have flavors like creamy cardio, pistachio pull-ups, rocky road abs. It's going to be sweet. And when people order, I'm gonna sell them in sets instead of scoops. <laughs> so they can be like, hey, can I have three sets of Rocket Road apps? Hell yeah, you can. Get your workout on. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that's so good. And then they can update their status. They just got done with the gym, did 45 sets of Rocket Road apps, kinda tired, gonna take a nap. <laughs> and their friends would be like, oh man, I'm so proud of Steve. He's going to the gym like eight times a week. He used to be a big old fatty. I think I take them out for ice cream for encouragement. <laughs> Keep the hope alive. I, know, I was a fat kid. I was 150 pounds when I was a kid. Yeah, I was either a fat kid or a skinny elephant. Uh, it was sad because I had to shop in the husky section. You know who else shops in the husky section? Midgets. Uh, you know how bad that is when you're a kid fighting with a grown little man over pants? Like, bro, I need those 32 by 12s. <laughs> I need them, bro. <laughs> and I went to a poor school. I hated going to a poor school. Because like, when you go to a poor school, they make you sell candy. And it's different than when you go to a nice rich school. When you go to a nice rich school, you sell candy. They're like, sell a thousand chocolate bars. We're going to go to the zoo. When you go to a poor school, it's like, 7,000 chocolate bars, we gotta keep the lights on. <laughs> How much that sucks when you're a kid and they give you a part-time job, you can put that on an application, you become a Sally Mae representative, it sucks. 
Because you don't sell candy bars because when you go to a poor school, they won't get those candy bars back. Like, we're going to charge you. We don't have any money. What you going to take? You have to sell out of a catalog. I right? know bad that is. You're just like, oh, if you turn to page three, uh, there's some peanut butter cups for $25. If you buy two, I get a slinky. <laughs> the only people that really sell candy are parents that work in offices because then they can guilt other parents. But like, hey, Steve, remember when your stupid kid had that candy sale? Guess what time it is. <laughs> yeah, you're buying two peanut butter cups. He's getting a slinky. Uh, thank you very much. My name is John Roque. Look, it's a toothpick. All right, great. <laughs> I want to thank all you guys for coming out and supporting your local landscapers. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much, because come tomorrow morning, boy, those white people are going to have to cut their own yards, bro. Because I know I won't be there. <laughs> those guys are great, aren't they? The guys who get up and cut your lawn for you, man. Man, those guys get up at the crack of dawn, even the rooster's pissed off, isn't he? The guys going, damn, what the hell are these guys doing up so early? Did these guys have tequila last night? What's going on here? You think the guy that's got the best job out of that whole crew is the lead blower guy? <laughs> that guy doesn't do anything, does he? <laughs> just guy sits there just waiting for something to happen over there with a freaking cigarette and a beer just looking at the other guys going, yeah, when you guys get through uh, farting around over there, I'll just blow this crap in the next yard and we'll do it all over again. How about that, huh? <laughs> My first time at the rodeo. Anyway, it's good to see everybody out here drinking, having a good time. Just make sure when you leave here, don't uh, be like the rest of us comics and go out and get a DUI. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> that's not a good thing. Don't laugh, Corona. That's, that's not good, you know, because you know what they make you do? Let me tell you something. Cops are the best at screwing up a good time. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> These guys want to pull you over just because you've been drinking and driving a little bit, you know what I mean? Make you get out of the car, count to 10, do your ABCs. I can't even do that crap sober, you know what I mean? <laughs> One of the worst things they did on my DUIs, is they made me put this mechanism on my car. We have to blow on it to get, to get it to start. Yeah, I'm serious. I basically have to give my car a blowjob in order to get it to start. I'm not kidding you. First time I get in the car, I got to sit in. I got to bend over and go. <laughs> <laughs> my lips get all numb like you ladies do sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? Like, shit, at one point, I felt my own hand going behind my head. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I had to get out and tickle the tires a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? It's Problem is, because I love to drink tequila. You guys like to drink tequila? Oh, man, I'm a big tequila drinker. Woo! Oh, man. Problem with me and tequila is that I'm not any good at it. Yeah. Because at the end of the night, I get all drunk and stupid, and I crap all over myself. It's not a good scene, let me tell you. But I start to drink tequila, man. I get like a flip personality. I do, man. I get, you know, real nice. I'm, I'm just a real shy guy. If I walk into a club and I walk into a bar, see some nice-looking ladies like yourselves here tonight, or you, sir, it doesn't matter at that point. <laughs> take any action I can get at this point. <laughs> I'm normally a shy guy, won't talk to you. Boy, I get a couple of shots of tequila, man. I'm like Enrique Iglesias, just like that. I'm not kidding. That's right, bro. I'll be at the bar. Two shots of tequila, please. What it looks like to me, you know. <laughs> in reality, everybody else in the club, I look like Jerry Lewis on crack. I'm not kidding. I'm on the dance floor going, "Yeah, come on, oh yeah, let me see that laffy taffy, oh yeah, come on, baby, let's go, ah, right. come on, Miss Purdy." <laughs> All right. So many people right now are looking at me, going, "Man, he does look like Jerry Lewis. What the hell's going on?" Either that or it's Mark Anthony. I'm just, yeah, I know. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's hot in here. Let me tell you something. I don't know. It's just a vato, man. Let me tell you something, man. You know, I, I just want to tell everybody that um, everybody's got a drunk in their family, I'm sure. Everybody's got a drunk in their family. Let me tell you something. My grandmother's doing a lot better. Thank you for asking. 
Because my grandmother's one of those Mexicanos that'll party for any damn reason at all. She don't care. Yeah. She'll be in the house and she'll go, mijo, you learn how to walk at the tequila right now. Let's get messed up. Come on, let's get drunk. <laughs> like, all right, grandma, settle down, all right? I'll get the tequila, you just roll the joints. I'll be right back. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. My grandma's got some good stuff. Let me tell you, bro. <laughs> and I like it when she rolls the joints because she doesn't roll those little pinners. She rolls those big, long ones. They're about like this big. She'll be at the... No wonder you and Grandpa been together for a long time. Holy cow! <laughs> Grandpa, you lucky guy. <laughs> My grandma's all borracha, man. She'll take any kind of shot, bro. It doesn't matter. Tequila shot, jello shot, pff, penicillin shot. She don't care. She just... Problem I hate, man, is that she gets all drunk, man. She gets, she's like the first one that leave a party all crap face, man. I swear to God, man. She'll be in the front yard puking her guts out behind the trash cans. And <laughs> 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 oh, oh, mijo, your grandmother's all messed up. <laughs> Go make sure your grandfather takes his Viagra, mijo. Go, go right now, go. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's the last thing you want to see your grandparents getting it on, you know what I mean? You imagine walking in on your grandparents, Poof, grandma, where you at? Who's your grandpa? Who's your grandpa? <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to bother you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, almost hit the Asian guy. Whoopa, whoopa. Hey, don't laugh, man. You're gonna get a Chinese star in the front. Can laugh, man. I'll tell you what, man. I'm glad we went to war with Iraq, bro, and not Asia, bro. Oof, man. You see Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Boy, these guys fly and crawl in the freaking walls, man. <laughs> if we ever go to war with Asia, man, we forget guns. We might as well get raid, man. <laughs> <laughs> there he is! Die! <laughs> <sighs> I think I got him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <sighs> what happened? Something happened? I'm actually new to the uh, state of California. I'm all the way from Houston, Texas. Believe it or not, Houston, Texas. Yeah, no, all right, I guess. That's the reason why I came here. It sucks over there. Yeah. <laughs> man, hockey is big out here in California. Jeez Louise. Oh, my God, I can't believe this, man. You know, y'all got all kinds of teams. Uh, freaking Sharks, uh, the Kings, the uh, LAPD. I mean, it's crazy out here, you know? Because hockey's a weird sport, isn't it? I mean, hockey's like the only sport that you can play and, you know, carry sticks and beat the hell out of a guy when, without having to go to jail, you know what I mean? How about those Dodgers, man? Those Dodgers are kicking butt? Man, jeez Louise. I love baseball. But to me, I don't know about you guys, but I think baseball pitchers have got to be the gayest people on this planet. I'm serious. You ever watch the baseball pitcher? What does he do, ladies? He comes out into the mound real nice and macho. Just got about a thousand horse tranquilizers in his colita right there, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's ready to kick some butt, right? This guy gets on the mound, his mannerisms will totally change, right? He'll grab that rosin bag and... And the whole time I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, how the hell does this guy concentrate with the catcher down there instigating everything, going, yeah, baby, just give it to me one more time right here. Just Thank you so much. My name is Rene Garcia. Good night. God bless. Look, I'm a black guy. All right. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. We got any black guys here tonight? Okay, good. I like black guys. No, I like black guys, you know, except when they walk into the restroom when I'm in there. I don't know, just get a little intimidated, you know what I mean? I hate that because I'm all over the stall like this, man. The black guy walks in, he's all showing off. <laughs> now I got to do the limbo just to get out of the restroom. I'm like, damn, bro.
that's not why. You guys, I own a Chihuahua, and uh, they own pit bulls. So I gotta watch out for my dogs. 34 years of marriage. You, you know what it's like going to bed with the same person for 34 years? There's actual jobs and chores involved. I'm in charge of the light switch. That's my job. Every night for 34 years, I'm at the light switch. Are you ready, honey? Are you under the blankets? Are you nice and warm? Hello, I'm talking to you. <sighs> Damn switch. I said the damn switch, I gotta fix the switch. Oh, click. Turn off the light, get under the blankets. Funny thing happens when women are in the dark. <laughs> women love to talk in the dark. <laughs> you know how you are, you damn women. You will just, the uh, lights go off and it's like, click, oh, you know what I did today? Oh, you know what I did today? I went to the gas station, I went to the market, I picked up the kids, I went over there because it was cheaper, blah, 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 shut the hell up. You shut up, I gotta get up early tomorrow. You're so mean, blah, 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 oh, crap. Women talk, man, the women talk. They talk, I, I finally found out why. Women, there was an article that said women use 20,000 words in one day. Men only use 7,000 words in one day. No wonder, she's got rollover minutes. <laughs> Women, uh, get in bed and they'll talk. Fortunately, I fall asleep. The more she talks, the more I fall asleep. It's just a babe, 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 uh, what, babe. Women ask stupid questions in the dark. You know it's true, you women ask stupid questions. Babe, 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 did you lock the front door? <laughs> you know we lie, because we ain't gonna tell you the truth. Yeah, I locked it. It's locked. All 15 locks. You don't believe us, you women will not believe us. You'll sit there like percolating all night. You won't sleep. You'll sit there going, I know he didn't lock it. I know he didn't lock it. I know he didn't lock it. Oh, you get mad and at 2.30 in the morning you explode. Get up! Get up! Get up! Go check the front door! Go check the front door! Go check it! Go check it! Uh, there I go. I'm locking the door. All 15 locks. I look over, there she is in the hallway of our three bedroom mansion that we have in the hood. <laughs> She's out there with a robe. Was it locked? I'm thinking to myself, if you were gonna get up anyway, why the hell didn't you lock it? I love my wife though. She just gave me children, gave me a grandson. I've got a grandson and, and, and it's, it's a trip having a grandson. You ever have to babysit your grandson? Do you ever have to come home and you know your grandson is sleeping over? And he's like 23. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I've got a three-year-old grandson. Loves to watch TV early in the morning. Do you ever come home drunk at four in the morning? Afraid to go in your own house because you don't want to start a fight? I was outside my own house afraid to go in and say, damn, I ain't going in there. Hell no. You know what, I should go in there. This is my house. <laughs> my house, I paid for the damn thing. And those people live in comfort got heating because of me, god dog it. That's my house. Shoot, I'm going in. I don't care if this starts a fight. It's my house. I go on in, next thing you know, my uh, Vietnamese neighbor's pushing me out. <laughs> you don't live here. <laughs> you don't live here. You don't live here. You live over there with the chihuahua. Wah, 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 wah. Chihuahua, wah. all night long, chihuahua. Wah. Finally sneak into my house with new technology. You ever sneak in with new technology? You have. Cell phones, you walk in with the light. <laughs> there's, there's the couch, I'll be sleeping there later. Oh, there's that chihuahua about to bark and wake everybody up. Hell with him. <laughs> there's, there's, oh, there's my wife. Oh, crap. What do I do now? A drunk brain thinks differently. 
I asked my brain, what do I do? My brain's like, just stand still, she won't notice you. <laughs> Babe, is that you? No. Oh. It's okay, you gotta watch the baby. Oh, doggone it. You ever watch a kid? He, he wants you to sing Elmo watching TV. Tata, sing Elmo's world. Tata needs a beer. Get one for me too, Bert. <laughs> hey, you folks have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Oh my god, I need love tonight, you guys. I recently broke up with my boyfriend. Thanks. And, um, you know, as heart wrenching as this experience was, we still managed to become, you know, stay good friends on Facebook. And at first when we broke up, I started using that Facebook check-in option that lets people know where you're at. I started checking into his favorite bars and clubs, you know, Irish pubs, ale houses, restaurants, just hoping that I would see him again. But yeah, I was checking into Facebook in the privacy of my own home, in my PJs, <laughs> eating a gallon of ice cream, listening to Adele. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. I will one day uh, ask you a running. <laughs> that just got too real. <sighs> but then I decided, you know what? I'm going to use the Facebook check in option to mess with his head a little bit. <coughs> For example, Diane just checked into Tony's house. Sorry about the broken window. Hashtag not gonna fix it. <laughs> Diane just checked into Planned Parenthood. Crossing my fingers. <laughs> Before you know it, I started a mobile upload album of pictures, of sonograms, ultrasounds. <laughs> that I found on Google Images. <laughs> I tagged him on it. <laughs> Looking more like his daddy every day. I got tons of likes, including my mom. More then the last comment, I actually got a comment on it like just a moment ago, it was from my ex. Hey babe, we need to talk. I liked it. what you guys are thinking. This girl's crazy. She would do anything for love. That's right. I would do anything for love. Fake a pregnancy online. But I won't tell the truth. Oh no, I need the fake child support money. You guys, I was thinking about maybe getting a dog. But here's the problem with dogs. They're like too expensive now. There's like diamond encrusted collars, Louis Vuitton bags to carry them around in. Doggy day spas. I can't afford human grooming, okay? Let alone a full body shiatsu massage for Rover who's probably gonna lick down there the whole entire time. What's next? A little Brazilian bikini wax for Fifi? <laughs> Shoot, boo, I know I got spayed, but I got to look right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to get my sniff on. Shoot, mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. oh, man. But we're raising our dogs to be like these little diva bitches, <laughs> all right? Seriously, like you back in the day, you remember Lassie, right? In the 50s, like Lassie would come barking to Timmy, row, 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 row. 
What's wrong, Tim? What's wrong, Lassie? Timmy's stuck in the well. Quick, let's go save him. But now, if Lassie would be recreated, number one, it would not be a collie. It would be sh like a shih tzu or like something smaller than my pinky. <laughs> and it would start barking off the most ridiculous demands. <laughs> what is it, girl? <laughs> Timmy's stuck in the what? what? No, wait, what was that? <laughs> Someone's in trouble. <laughs> They don't get you Evian in the next five minutes? <laughs> Someone needs help picking out the dog food? It's not organic? <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's another thing. Dog food has become the most complicated thing of life. Okay, like before it was like Alpo, pedigree, that's it, right? Now it's like organic ingredients. Oh, natural. New Purina chicken and rice mix. Now 15% better tasting. There's a percentage on that, really? <laughs> okay, so there's either two ways we could come up with that percentage. A, you had a dog, a dog focus group <laughs> moderated by Cesar Millian, the dog whisperer. <laughs> or B, you had a human being taste two samples of dog food and give that a number. <laughs> yeah, this one's 15% better tasting than this one. I don't know about you guys, but I don't trust the opinion of someone that chose dog food tasting as a career choice. Call me crazy. I just don't think that guy has good judgment. Oh, man. Uh, I hate going to my parents' house, you guys. Because my parents have the tackiest house on the block. All right? And it's because they keep their Christmas decorations up all year round, okay? It's not just the lights. Oh, no, it's not just, oh, the lights are left on on the trailer. No, no, no. No. It's a whole nativity scene with like baby Jesus and three kings <laughs> under the grass hut. That thing's been out in the sun for so long. It looks like a white albino homeless family living in the front of my lawn. <laughs> the worst part about it is that my mom will try to camouflage it for every holiday. <laughs> for example, for St. Patrick's Day, she has green shirts to say kiss me, I'm Irish. The three kings are doing keg stands. <laughs> Just Virgin Mary's throwing up as Joseph is holding back her hair. <laughs> then for the 4th of July, it's a big giant map of the United States with baby Jesus on top. <laughs> See, mija, one nation under God. <laughs> oh, say, can you see? And then for Halloween, my mom likes to dress them all up like ghosts. But there's crosses all around. So now it looks like a Ku Klux Klan meeting in the front of my house for the month of October. <laughs>